Welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast with Scott McKenzie. Scott is a passionate industry professional dedicated to transferring cutting-edge, industry-focused innovations and trends while highlighting the men and women who keep the world moving. So put on your hard hat, grab your work boots, and let's go. All right, welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast. My name is Scott McKenzie, but you know that because you're listening to the Industrial Talk Podcast. So thank you very much for joining. We are broadcasting from the IoT Solutions World Congress here in beautiful Barcelona, Spain. I need for you to put that on your bucket list. Barcelona is a beautiful town and uh, with great people. So put that on your bucket list because that's important. And it, we are brought to you by those incredible folks at Industrial Internet Consortium. That's iiconsortium.org. And you're saying to yourself, Scott, why do I need to go out there? They are the leaders. That is your one-stop shop in all things that's associated with IoT, AI, security, and they are associated with the best of the best, the leaders of these industries. That is iiconsortium.org. And you know what? It's free. You can download documents. They got white papers. They got uh, all this documentation and content out there free of charge. So there's no friction. You need to do it. We have an incredible interview with a gentleman by the name of Stan Schneider. He's a PhD. Do I call you doctor? No. Nope. nope. I call him Stan. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to. And he's president and the CEO of RTI, which stands for Real Time Innovations. And he's also a member of the Industrial Internet Consortium. He's part of the steering. Can- he's a vice chair of the steering. He he's one of the professionals that you need to reach out to. So we're going to have that interview. So stay tuned. Hey, Stan, are you having a good conference? Yeah, it's great here. It's uh, always great. It's my fifth one of these, actually. You, you've been here since the beginning. Since the beginning. Yeah, Absolutely. see? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, come on. You've seen a lot of change. Absolutely. I mean, to where, where, where it started and to where it is today. And, I mean, it's, it's a beautiful layout, great event, mm-hmm. wonderful people. You know what I like about it? It's the level of passion that exists with everybody that I talk to. They like their stuff. Right, and they, it, it, but the passion is driven by really solving problems, and and driving to those uh, those solutions and the use of technology to do so. Right, I like it, man. So That's evolution's cool. been amazing. When we first started out, it was a lot of large companies coming here trying to figure out what IoT, how to spell IoT. They were pretty lost. Um, <laughs> And, and that's I O T. That's how you spell it. Yes, it is. Very good. <laughs> and you spell R T I R T I. That's exactly right. Um, and and now you know the, the industry has moved along. They're, now it's full of startups. There's actually starting to be real money flow in this world. And yeah. Exciting things. There must be a hundred, two hundred startups on the floor out here. Wouldn't surprise me. They're all part of. You know, a lot of national booths. And, and see, what's like great that. about that is that they're proving the tech. You know, everybody said, hey, in the beginning, it's like, this is great stuff. It's good. But but the ability to be able to actually put it into action and create results that are tangible, yeah. that's what I, I, I yeah, enjoy. We're, we're still very early on that journey. Very, it very is. early. It's a, this will be the IoT, which is really, my humble opinion, is the story of the IoT is taking technologies from all industries and putting them together to make all industries better. Yes. And the, the really hard part is taking intelligence and connecting it to the real world. And yeah. you know, this, this, those, those two thoroughfares, I like to say RTI, I'll talk about this, we live at the intersection of artificial intelligence and pervasive networking. Those two roads, those two technology directions are probably the two biggest things going on and the IoT is where they cross. And it really is an amazing wow, opportunity is. to change the way the world works. And, and, and uh, before we get into why you're such an incredible professional, what fascinates me is the speed at which this stuff is happening. It seems like it's happening fast. So, yeah. so the, the, the costs are going down, capabilities are constantly going up across the board, and the collaboration that exists, because not everybody... You know, there's going to be device manufacturers that, yeah, we got the device, but they need to work with other, you know, right. parts and components of that whole digital life cycle or digital uh, process. So, for the listeners out there, Stan, give us a little background on who you are and why you're such an Dr. Stan. Give us a little background on who you are. <laughs> uh, my name is Stan Schneider. I'm the CEO of a company called RTI, Real Time Innovations. We are the largest connectivity software vendor in the IoT. Uh, we provide software that allows you to build large systems with intelligence in them. Uh, most of our customers, all of our customers, are somehow connecting AIs or what I call functional AIs, functional artificial intelligence, with 
uh, distributed systems. We are you know, a little bit unique in the thing. We've been doing this for a long time. We have a lot of actual applications of over a thousand things out there, designs, and they aren't all shipping today, but some of them are. We're running things like NASA's launch control system and Canada's air traffic system, air traffic control, and uh, most of the Navy ships, over 200 autonomous vehicles, medical systems, actually our biggest single customers in the medical space doing intelligent connected medical devices that allow the technology to help out the care team. So it's Okay, a, so for I I am I am Joe Sixpack and I hear what you're saying. I was uh, stunned by the NASA launch uh, statement. You just sort of glossed over that. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that's a long term. We've been working with NASA forever. But yeah, we, <laughs> it's we, just we run the their, fact that you said NASA it's like, oh yeah. That's cool. <laughs> We do a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, I know. And we you have need those systems. Flying cars, underwater vehicles. You can go to our video and our booth and watch a shark eat a robot. It's awesome. <laughs> See, now you're very distracted. So, you, you, so for you go have people out there, it's uh, it's uh, RTI.com. Yeah. If you can't remember that, you don't deserve to see an underwater it's, car. That's <laughs> it's like oh my gosh, that's incredible we're stuff. Under our car. No, but <laughs> but with that, you're, you're you're talking you're talking a lot about how your 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 systems are enabling these right. these solutions, these these results. Like right. the underwater. If it wasn't for your systems, are you saying that underwater car or or the land uh, launch underwater or, robot? The ro right. oh, okay, okay, there you go. Yes, we make it much easier to build those large very reliable connected systems. We have a very unique technology, so you have to it think about niche, what, a, what a system is. The best definition yeah. of a system is a bunch of things that share information. And most connectivity works by sending information, typically one message at a time, to where people need it. And the problem with that is every application, uh, not people, things, it's an internet of things. Right, right. Every application has to interpret that separately and get it, and it's, it's very messy. Uh, our, our technology, based on a standard called DDS, which I can yeah. also spell, yeah. um, has <laughs> the unique me. characteristic that it's actually data-centric, so it really builds the system around the data instead of building the data around the system. and it turns everything upside down, but think of it as all the data in every device and every algorithm for the entire system lives inside that device or inside that algorithm. In reality, you ask for what you want and we'll deliver it just on time, but you can write algorithms that are very, very specific. It's sort of like a database, and now this is gonna this is gonna blow you away. But a database for future information, not stored information, future information. The best way to think of it. Yes. Well, I can um, give you examples. Yeah, we, we, understand uh, it. I, I, for me as a host, I'm trying to just sort of figure out the next question because I'm going. Oh my gosh, that's a that's a question. That's a question. That's a qu okay. Let me just. So for the listeners out there, your system enables multiple devices, other things to be able to communicate? It's like, it's like yes, that. Yes, to uh, work like, together. To work together. Our, our, our tagline is, right. is your system's working as one. It's a very yeah, see, profound that, no, statement. No, but that is, it's true. It's a very because, profound statement. <laughs> see, I can, I, can, I can relate to that because I've been involved in implementations where that's not the case, where right. there is some challenges with, yeah, I can communicate with that, but this, this, oh, I can't communicate. But if I could, it would be great. But I can't right. because I don't. And, right. And so you, you, your, your system, your solution allows that communication to happen. We would turn that upside down and basically yeah. just deliver you all the data. So yeah. you ask for anything you want. Boom. With the speed, with latency, with liveliness requirements. Yeah. Like you have to have that sensor alive, or the system's in big right. trouble. Right. Right. And we will make sure all that happens and deliver it to you. Okay. So, so it's. Prior to the uh, podcast, you said you had five questions that you could ask. I and then do. I can ask you five questions and essentially 100% probability tell you if you're going to end up with our product or okay. one of our competitors' okay. products. Let's, uh, let's play that game. Number we'll one. We'll play that game. Number one, uh, are there severe consequences? They're all yes or no questions, too. <laughs> Thank yes you. Or I was no going to say, oh, man. No, yes or no questions. Are there severe consequences? I can def define that for being offline for one minute. So well, if, you're driving, if you're driving an autonomous car down the road and you're offline for one minute and you're going 80 miles an hour, you're dead, right? That's right. If you're running, we actually balancing the western grid with 
the you can't States. be off. Uh, you can't turn the power mess, system man. off for a minute. It won't come back on very yeah. quickly anyway. No. You know, you can't stop an operation. You can't stop a robot doing many different things without some really severe consequences. I don't mean just shutting down your assembly line for an right, hour. Right, right. You know, it's it, it's something that's... Even that could be severe. It's, I mean... It, but yeah, it costs you money, but we're talking about... You're talking you know, destroying systems, destroying, killing just, people. Yeah, that that's kind right. Of, those are severe consequences. Severe, severe. Yeah, right. I like Air that. Air traffic component. control is a good and example. And so the answer is, can I? So can, can you? I, is it a big? Is it a significant? I can't afford problem? that. That's a big no. Right. Well, I you can't. should actually come up with an application to think of it. That's the first question. Yeah. So I, I don't have to know what you're doing to do that. You can say yes or no. Second question is, if you said the word millisecond in the last two weeks. No way, really? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I haven't, but then, uh, if then I you don't, did... Then you don't get to check that one. <laughs> because, you know, you only, you don't, by the way, you only have to get three of the five right. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but I'll make a note because I do want I, I, I to save right. all a second. So if, if you're doing feedback control yeah. at, you know, thousands of hertz or even right. tens of hertz, you know, you could say 250 milliseconds, that counts. But if, if, if your systems are faster than human responses... Right. Then you're probably using milliseconds or even microseconds, and then you need the kind of performance that, that we deliver. Uh, third question is: Do you have more than ten software engineers? <laughs> um, don't need to know what you're doing for that. But yeah. DDS, yeah. The, the software we do, it's really a software development environment. Um, we're in an amazing array of industries. We really aren't very much in discrete manufacturing, or even some. We have some process control, but because right. there's just not that many programmers. There are going to be, but today you walk into your typical factory and they just have technicians or industrial engineers oh, putting yeah. together work cells yeah, and that's yeah. not really a software development environment. No, I it think isn't. it will be soon because you can't really use AIs effectively without a lot of custom software. And I actually think importantly industry after industry is switching. Software's eating the world, the best way to say it, yeah. is switching to a competitive basis that's it used to be who has the best interoperability or reliability or price or whatever wins in a very short period of time in almost every industry. Whoever has the best software is going to win. Yeah. And so if you don't, if you're running an industrial company and you don't have a software team, it's going to be a different game. Soon. Right. Right. So anyhow, if you have more than ten software engineers, you check that box. Um, the third box, and I told you a little about the the big divisions of the IoT. Uh, are you sending data? to more than one place, between devices, between applications in the field. Yeah. If you're just collecting it to the cloud, then, or you're just talking to one uh, web service or one right, you know, right. Exactly. predictive maintenance service for your device, right. there's other ways to do that. It's not our game. But if you need to send it to multiple locations, multiple... If you need to connect things together, so yeah. like in a car, you got LIDARs and radars and video cameras. Right, and, right proximity sensors and you got algorithms like yeah. localization, figuring out where you are, and right, path right. planning and situational right, awareness right. and you got the control for the car. All of these things have to talk yeah. together in le in milliseconds very reliably. Can't stop for a minute. You can't stop it's for a minute. It's a perfect you got it. You're going to have lots of programmers. Yeah. It's a per you're going to you get all those three questions, all four of in those fact, questions. In fact, it's like that's the number one question. If you say yes, then you're going to have to answer these other ones as uh, no, no, because you could send things between devices that could be very slow, like okay. a thermostats or something. Okay. I mean, who cares? It may be very simple. You just care what the average temperature in the building is. You don't need a lot of software people to do that. They're, they're, they're independent questions. The last one's actually the hardest one, and, and the reason that RTI is not a you know, 200,000 or 20,000 person company. Yeah. <laughs> um, is, we'll, we'll try to you, get you there. Are you building something new? because it's a completely different architecture. It's hard to even explain what it does. It's a database for future information. It's the best way to look at a relational model for future yeah. information. I can give you examples and you'll understand it, but it's hard to explain quickly. Example me not, to death, go for it. Okay, so yeah. you're building an air traffic control system and yep. you're, uh, you're from the US, so I'll use English units. You're trying to do landing coordination on, an, on a <laughs> runway. Um, and there's, you know, 10 different, they call them regions, paths into the airport. Right. And, you know, there could be tens of thousands of planes in the air somewhere. Right. They call them tracks, radar right. tracks. And you just want to do landing coordination on this one runway. So you just say, hey, I want to know. So there's a, in a database, there's a concept of a slice. So for instance, if you have a, an HR database, you could look for employees of, 
you know, your company, what do you got, ZF, uh, ZF, I suppose, on your thing there. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever, you look at employees of your yeah. company that have been with the company for three years that didn't join the 401k program, right? right. That's, that's a very specific slice of right. information. Uh, but it's old information. It has to already be in the database to get it. Right. We can say, okay, we want to look for airplanes that are within five miles, below 5,000 feet, descending and coming towards me. That's and a we, dynamic. That's a that dynamic, dynamic. We call it a filter. It's a future slice. Yeah, yeah. Because it, there's nothing today. You know, I'm not looking for old stuff. I want to know in the future if that happens. And if it happens, I need to know about it in a hundredth of a second yeah, or a yeah, tenth of a second. And I need something that's really critical. We call it liveliness. So if I've got nine regions and I've got you know three radars there and two here and seven there or whatever redundant sensors, I don't need them all running, but I need every region covered. Right. That's called liveliness. We can actually guarantee liveliness. So the lack of information isn't the same as a dead sensor, right? A dead sensor, right. could, there could be an airplane there, which is a big problem. Right. And now there's an algorithm that. with all right. that, those are all called quality of service, by the way, the speed, the liveliness, the reliability, all those things, there's 20 of them, 21 of them actually. Um, you set those, you ask for the data you want, and you can just go to sleep as an algorithm. You have to write all these things, you have to test, called pinging all the different radars, you don't have to do anything like right, that. Right. You can just sit there, and if a plane ever comes, we're going to guarantee you, you're going to find out about it in a hundredth of a second, and if another one comes, you'll find out about it. And all you have to do is say, oh, are they too close? If they're too close, slow that one down. Yeah, and, and, that, informa and that information is being collected by your system. You're just pulling it's that in. It's being collected by what we call the data bus. It's yeah, like a true. database, yeah. which is a data, it's like a database for future information. We call it a data bus. Just to have it. For, from, from an industry point of view, this can be applied to all industry. If, if I'm answering these questions. If you're answering those questions, you're, you're going to end up with this product. Yeah. Or this technology, because there's really no other easy way to build a big What if you have like legacy that? systems? What if you have something that's already embedded? Is, it's th that's the probably challenge. probably not worth the upgrade. But I'll, let me give you an example, uh, though. See, so Grand Coulee Dam, right? It's the largest power plant in North America. It's also, importantly, the fastest power source in North America. But so, it is. Oh, yeah, it is it's, fast. I, you know, it, it's fast, meaning if you have an oil-fired plant or a nuclear plant. Oh, no, you plant, can ramp this up because it's not uh, being driven by the, you know, the thermal limitations or whatever you right. got to do. It's it, can like, take, it can take hours to yeah, safely absolutely. shut down a, a, an oil plant and days to shut down a nuclear plant. Yeah. And the problem is it used to be it's called base load. Yeah, it means the they just load. put power out as much power as they can make. Um, and then, you know, along comes wind and solar and all this variable sources of variation on the grid, and they can't do that anymore. So they started you know, having balancing, really, oil-fired plants. They but they challenges. were doing that, even because that was baseload, they were doing that with operators on phone 24-7. I, I, I was watching, the. Uh, I worked at uh, Southern California Edison and took a tour of their system operator. Right. And they are just sitting there going, yeah. Watching, watching the load, yeah. and, you know, just they're doing right. it like by hand. But, but by hand, yeah. and they, they have 14 plants that were yeah, balancing. Yeah, that's exactly grid, right. And I don't know what they're together, maybe a gigawatt or something yeah. like that. Grand Coulee, seven gigawatts all by itself, and it can change in 10 minutes. Uh, take it all on or off in 10 minutes. Yeah. And so somebody came up with the real idea, hey, let's just rip out all the electronics. So it's not really an upgrade, a legacy system. The hardware is legacy, but the software is no nothing like legacy. They ripped it all out. They replace it with an intelligent system that can now do that balancing essentially all by itself, although now it's been redundantly and See, deployed on lots of dams. That's funny that you that's mentioned So the that. hydropower yeah. portfolio is being used to enable more penetration by other renewables. See, so, that's interesting because I could never put my arm around the, the impact renewables would have on the grid given base, you know, base load uh, generation, that's pretty stable, right? I got that. And then as demand continues to go, and then try to pull in renewables, where there's a level of, a level of inefficiencies and, and variability, yeah. that to me, I was always, yeah. I, I never could understand how a person right. can do that. Well, that's, that's actually at the, at, the, at the macro level. The micro level is actually much more challenging. Um, I, I like to say that, uh, Renewables are clean energy, but they're dirty power. Meaning, they, they're you. clean energy, but they don't have controlled phase and voltage and you know. Output. I'll tell you a story just, offline when I get back. Okay. There you know. So the, the the reality is is that uh, this is a vital, but but going forward, it, it's it's probably better utilized. Your 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 systems are better utilized in going forward with new 
and to find, you know, solutions. Yeah, so that it's just can, not. I mean, I told you if you're going to use it, you know, yeah. if you're trying to retrofit something, you got to decide how big of a retrofit you're yeah. going to do. And if it's, if it's, you know, just trying to incrementally add functionality or incrementally want to optimize a little bit, not, there's other ways to do it. It's yeah, it's not, not going not gonna, to. It's not us. Yeah. So. So, um, how long have you guys been in business? Uh, we've been doing middleware for about 12 years, 20, 2006, really. So Middleware. So that's, the country's been around before, but uh, we used to be a tools company. We sold that business. The acquirer didn't want the, the URL, RTI.com, which is a great URL. So It, it is, by the way. <laughs> we kept that's the why name, I was, I was we, shocked so we, by it. It's like, we sold the entire know. business. We don't have any of those products or <laughs> any of those customers. are completely different. <laughs> I was completely different than we used to I was to uh, dazzled by the fact that you had RTI. I'm going, how did they get that URL? We got that really early <laughs> back when we were a tools company. Yeah. We weren't doing middleware back then. Yeah, but now you are doing middleware. And now you're changing, we are doing middleware. You're changing the world. Yeah. Well, I, I think you are. We make the world run better. That's our... Wow, there you go. <laughs> All right, are you active out there on uh, LinkedIn? I am very active on LinkedIn, yes. That's Stan Schneider. That's S-C-H-N-E-I-D-E-R. Yeah. And he's with RTI. I didn't get to talk about the IIC, but it's a great organization. But that's okay. I'll pop a IIC plug in right now. That's right. Industrial Talk is brought to you by those wonderful people at Industrial Internet Consortium, or IIC. Go out to iiconsortium.org. Find out more. they got people like Stan and others that are really smart that know what they're doing about the IoT space and all of the little moving components associated with making you a better business, more efficient, solving problems. I like it. you got five steps that if you if you said yes to all of them or just three of them. Just three of them. You better contact Stan. <laughs> How long have you been with uh, IIC? Since it was founded, essentially. Not not exactly because the five big founders. We were, we were the... We were the second, I suppose, non-founding company to join. <laughs> All right. Now there's, you know, hundreds. All right, reach out with Stan. He's out on LinkedIn. It's important that you do so. And once again, we're broadcasting from IoT Solutions World Congress in beautiful Barcelona, brought to you by those incredible folks at Industrial Internet Consortium. That's iiconsortium.org. Find out more. They've got paper. They've got information out there that make you a better professional, specifically if you're looking into the IoT, AI, Primarily Industry 4.0. If you're not doing it, I'm telling you, your competition is, so figure it out. So thank you very much for joining. We've got another great interview on the way, so stay tuned to the Industrial Talk Podcast. We will be right back. You're listening to the Industrial Talk Podcast Network. 